In this lesson, we'll learn how we can map our phonemes to audio using the auto lip sync feature. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in our previous lesson, we learned how we can draw different phonemes or mouth expressions for a character here in Toon Boom Harmony. And again, you can also do the same thing in Animate or Animate Pro. So we started off by just talking about how we would draw a couple of different phoneme mouth expressions and just how we would construct them here in Toon Boom, um, whether we just have the mouth by itself or if the mouth is going to be um, kind of slightly open, basically extending the jaw down. And so we finished out by not only learning how we can name each one of these different drawings by right-clicking on the cell, but also showing off all of the nine basic phonemes that we have um, for our nerdy guy character. And again, all of these different mouth expressions, um, while they're different in style from, from our examples that I've provided in your reference files, um, the overall shapes are relatively the same. Each one of these different mouth expressions um, conveys some sort of sound. Okay. So now that we have our different mouth expressions, we're ready to bring in some audio so we can start syncing up these phonemes to that audio track. So let's go up to File, Import, and we're going to go to Sound. So in your Referenced Files folder, you're going to find this Digital Tutors underscore end underscore one wave file. Let's go ahead and open that. And that will basically bring in that audio on its own layer in the Layers section of our Timeline view. And we can see that audio right there as well in the Timeline section. Let's go ahead and play it and see what it sounds like. So we'll come up here and hit Play at the top of our interface. Digital Tutors, teaching the people who make movies and games. Okay, ex excellent. So now what we want to go ahead and do is basically have all of these different phonemes basically start to extend across our frames here and be placed accordingly to match up with that audio. Okay, so to do this, the first thing we want to do is right click anywhere on our audio track right here in our timeline section. And then we're going to go to lip sync. And then we want to go ahead and choose auto lip sync detection. This basically prepares the audio so that it can automatically detect these phonemes before we map them, okay? So let's go ahead and click on that. And so now the audio is basically prepared to auto-detect phonemes. Now another way that you can do this is actually through the Layers Property view. So if you don't see your Layers Property view um, anywhere here on your interface, you can go to any one of these views and just click on the downward arrow and choose Layer Properties. And this may be slightly off your screen, but that basically brings up the Layers Property view for our audio and so you could basically do the same thing that we just did by clicking on detect okay so now what we want to do is basically map these phonemes okay so we can either click on map right here or we can right click and go to map lip sync so either one would work and this is going to take us into our lip sync mapping dialog box and there are a few things in here that may be confusing at first so we'll go ahead and kind of walk through them now so up here at the top of our dialog box, you can see our source layer. That's basically the audio that we've just brought in and imported. The destination layer, that needs to be your phonemes, right? Your different mouth expression. That's basically how they're going to link up. So right now it's set to our head layer, which we clearly do not want. So we want to hit this drop down arrow and choose mouths. Okay, great. Now down here in the mappings section, um, you can see that we have all of these different um, mouth expressions, okay? So we have like a closed mouth, uh, we have some open mouth ones here. Basically each one of these little boxes or each one of these different sections here is reserved um, for a specific type of phoneme. So a specific type of phoneme has to go in each one of these. So this first one where we have that closed mouth, that's basically where our MVP mouth expression that we drew in the previous lesson, that's where that drawing um, is going to go. That's where it needs to be mapped to. Now, do not be confused by these letters right here. Um, each one of these different mouth expressions does not represent the sound of the letter that's out to the side. So this first one here doesn't represent A. It's not representing an A ah or an A sound by any means. It's just a naming convention, okay? So this kind of leads me back to my point that we talked about in our previous lesson where we named each one of our drawing layers. If you recall, as we created um, each additional phoneme, 
it was giving it a number, a, a number. So like the first MVP was one, and then our consonants was two. And that could be kind of confusing because basically you would have to drop in each number for that specific phoneme to match up with its um, specific spot over here in the lip syncing dialog box. And that can get really confusing um, trying to remember what number represents what phoneme and where it needs to go. So I prefer to have the actual um, phoneme letters that basically signify the sound it should make. So unfortunately, we can't come down here and copy and paste these phonemes by just clicking on the data view name right there or the name of that drawing layer in the data view. So what I found is very easy is I have them all on a text um, file right here. So I can just come over here and just copy, hitting control C, just selecting one of those, and then coming over here and pasting it in its appropriate place. All right. Now I'm noticing that my text file is um, disappearing behind the interface as I do this. So I'm just going to drag it off to the side. And basically, we're going to come through and copy each one of these into its respective place. So this spot right here, B, is reserved for all of those consonants. A was reserved for that MBP phoneme. And we want to go ahead and work our way down. So we're going to have E will be next right there. And then we're going to have A the AI phoneme, and then we're going to have our O phoneme. And again, you can kind of see that signified by the different drawings that we have over there, the examples that they provide. Next would be U, right? And then F and V. Okay, now this X down here, um, that's basically reserved for any part on your timeline where there's no audio or no sound, okay? So you could really use um, a neutral expression if you have one of those and basically place that drawing name right there. Now in our case, we're actually just going to go ahead and use MBP again, okay? Sometimes you can use your MBP uh, mouth expression since it's a closed mouth expression. You can use that for a neutral uh, mouth expression as well, okay? Now, one thing I do want to point out before we click OK, and it's kind of unfortunate, but they don't give you all the um, s enough spaces um, here in our lip syncing um, mapping dialog box um, for all nine of our phonemes that we have, all nine of our basic phonemes. It's only letting us go up through the F and V phoneme. So if we bring back up our examples once again, we can see that there's a couple that we don't have spaces um, to include. So we don't have an option for our WQ or our L um, mouth expressions. There's no, there's no little box for that. And so that doesn't mean that we can't use additional phonemes beyond the ones right here in the lip sync ma mapping dialog box. We still can. Um, we'll just have to do that manually. This really just kind of gets us started and it's going to cover um, most of the major ones. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to click OK. And you can see now that we've done that, it's basically spaced out and placed those different phonemes accordingly down here in the timeline section to basically match up with the audio. All right. So now we can go ahead and play our audio. We can see how those phonemes match up. Digital tutors, teaching the people who make movies and games. All right. Not too bad. That's actually looking pretty nice. Okay. So we'll go ahead and play that one more time. Digital tutors, teaching the people who make movies and games. Cool. Now, um, I have my button right here with that little S right there up here at the top of our interface. I have that clicked on. That allows us to scrub through and still hear audio. So if we go ahead and scrub through, I'm seeing a couple spots already where I'd like to change out, where I'd like to change out um, the drawings for a different phoneme, okay? So we're going to talk about that in our next lesson and how we can easily do that in the sound editor in the layers properties for our audio. So stick around and we'll tackle that in our next lesson.